Well, hey, Randy, how you doing? This is uh, Chris, and uh, so today I think we're going to go ahead and talk about balancing um, equations. And we'll see how that goes. We'll just start real basic. So let me go ahead and just throw some paper down here. All right. So when we talk about balancing, balancing, balancing chemical equations. There we go. So the, the, the big thing here, there, there really aren't any secrets. There are several ways you can do it. Lots of videos out there on it. Um, some may be more helpful than this one. There really are no secrets. And really what it comes down to is it comes down to the concept of conservation. Conservation of mass. Okay. And so when you look at a chemical equation and you have your reactants, all right, your reactants and your products, okay, the, the mass that you have on one side has to equal the mass that you have on the other side, okay? So the, the atoms, the atoms that you have in your reactants have to equal the atoms and in, in the products, and, and that's really it. Is it's just a matter of um, putting coefficients where they need to go to make sure that you have equal numbers of mass on the reactant and product side of the equation. And then that's that's really all there is to it. So let's just take a basic equation here. Um, let's see here. Let's start with um, hydrogen peroxide, which is H two. O2, okay? So I have hydrogen peroxide here, and uh, the H2O2 um, is, uh, uh, we'll say it's a, in a liquid form there, okay? Um, now, when it comes to balancing chemical equations, this, these numbers after the, the symbol, these are what we call subscript, okay? Subscript just, just kind of throw this in the back of your mind. Never, never changes. Okay, so you cannot put, you cannot change these, these little, these little subscripts here. They cannot change. The only place that you can place numbers, what we call coefficients, are in front. Okay. So your coefficients, okay. Your coefficients can only go in front not after, okay? So that's a big thing there. Okay, so um, H2O2, and let's do a, we'll do a decomposition reaction, and H2O2 becomes H2 gas, that's hydrogen gas, um, and oxygen gas, okay? So this is a chemical reaction that we're looking at here. So what I like to do is I like to just draw a little table, okay? So let's do a table and I'll go um, reactants. All right, reactants on one side and products on the other side, okay? Uh, reactants and products. And then I'm gonna look at what I have. Well, all I have here are hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen, so I'll put hydrogen and oxygen, okay? So let's go ahead and now compare. So let's start with hydrogen. We'll just start with hydrogen, okay? And let's see, I have two hydrogens here. You see that, there are two hydrogens. Okay, so I have two hydrogens on the reactant side. Let's look at products. Looks like I have two hydrogens on the product side. Okay, and then let's move on to oxygen here. Um, I have two oxygen atoms on the um, reactant side, and it looks like I have two oxygens on the product side. So this equation is actually already balanced. Um, what really what are in front? Um, the only coefficient that is in front of these would be one. Okay, you don't actually need to put that though in your balancing equation. Um, it's just assumed that one is always there unless there's some other coefficient like two or three. So what this tells us is that if you had one 
molecule of hydrogen peroxide that would give you one molecule of hydrogen gas and one molecule of oxygen gas. Um, that, that analogy works, but in chemical reactions, it's generally better to look at this in terms of moles um, because a mole is a more reasonable number. It's, it's, a larger, it's a larger number involving larger amounts of atoms, and generally chemical reactions, we're not looking at single um, single molecules, single atoms, we're looking at a bigger picture. So um, this could just as easily be one mole of hydrogen peroxide would give you one mole of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. And that's generally how we look at it. Okay, so um, let's just go ahead and do a few um, just to kind of get the hang of it. So let's do, um, let's do this chemical reaction here. So I have uh, sodium. Okay, I'm going to give myself uh, some space so I can put the coefficients in if I need to. Plus chlorine, so sodium um, is going to be a solid. Okay, plus uh, chlorine Cl2, which would be a, a chlorine gas. Okay, and that is going to yield um, a sodium chloride molecule, NaCl, okay? So this is our chemical reaction, okay? Sodium and chlorine gas are giving us molecules of sodium chloride. Let's go ahead and balance this guy. So um, I'm gonna put reactants and products, okay? And then I'm gonna see, what do I have? I have sodium and chlorine, that looks like that's all we're dealing with. So sodium and chlorine. Okay, so let's start the reactant. So I have one sodium here, okay, and one sodium there, okay, so we're looking good. Let's go to chlorine. I have Cl2, so I actually have two atoms of chlorine in the reactants, and I have one atom of chlorine in the products. Okay, so this is a problem. This is a problem because I need reactants and products to be equal. So then the question I have to ask myself is what can I do to make these equal? Okay, so I need, okay, I need two chlorine atoms over here. So the, the only way that I can get this equal to this is if I put two here in my coefficients. Okay, so now I have two chlorine atoms, okay, in my products, and two chlorine atoms in my reactants, two and two. But when we do that, sometimes when we do that, we change it up a little bit. So you saw I put that two here. That also means that I have two sodium. So now my products have two sodium. So what do I need to do over here in my reactants? to make sure that the sodium matches the sodium. Well, I just need to put a two in front of the sodium. So now I have two sodium in the reactants, okay? I have two sodium in the products. I have two chlorine in the reactants, and I have two chlorine in the products. So what this chemical, a balanced chemical equation is saying is that if I have two moles of sodium reacting with one mole of chlorine gas, that will give me two moles of sodium chloride molecules. Okay, how does that, how does that look? Um, hopefully that makes sense. Well, let's just go ahead and keep on working uh, through some, some more, um, more, uh, more problems here, if you will. Um, let's, do, um, let's do a combustion. Let's do um, hydrogen, um, hydrogen gas, okay. Uh, plus oxygen gas, and that is going to yield um, H2O vapor, water vapor, and so I'll put a gas there, and obviously there's going to be um, a lot of heat. You don't have to put this here. I just like to put that there in my combustion reactions because it just reminds me, hey, this is a combustion reaction, and the enthalpy should be uh, negative there. Um, so this is kind of a placeholder, but this, the heat is not a part of balancing the equation by any means. Okay, so let's just set this 
um, equation up like we've done. Products, react, uh, ah, let's do that again. So reactants and products, okay. So what do we have here? I have hydrogen and I have oxygen, okay. That looks like that's all we have. So let's just start at hydrogen, what the heck. So here uh, on the uh, reactants, I have two hydrogens. Um, let's look at the products. I have H2O, um, so that's one hydrogen and two oxygen. So what do I need to do to get the hydrogens matching up on both sides? What do I need to do? Well, what I need to do is I need to put a two here, right? I put a two in the coefficient. And what that, what's that going to do? That's going to give me two hydrogens. So now um, they match up. So let's go ahead and work our way down to oxygen here. So I have two oxygen in the reactants. How many oxygens do I have in the products? Um, two oxygens there. Okay. So I have two oxygens here. All right, looking good, right? What do you think? Or did I mess something up in here somewhere? Did I mess something up? Um, and occasionally this can happen. Okay, remember that the subscript never changes. Okay, so... I had two hydrogens all along, okay? So let's just go ahead and get rid of this here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a line through this. And let's just work this through one more time. Okay, so I have my reactants, my products, and I've got hydrogen and oxygen. So let's start over and make sure that we watch the subscript. So let's start in reactants. Two hydrogen. Products, don't forget to look at that subscript. That's two hydrogens, not two oxygens. Okay, so in fact, the hydrogens match up. Okay, so now let's move down to oxygen here. I've got two oxygen in the reactants and one oxygen in the products. So what do I need to do to get the oxygens to match up? Well... I need to put a 2 there, right? So now I have 2 oxygen in the product, but we, we changed it a little bit, didn't we? Because, because this 2 times 2 here is a 4, so I, in fact I now have 4 hydrogens in my products. Oh goodness, so what do I need to do to make sure that I have 4 hydrogens in my re reactants? Well, if I just put a 2 here, okay, put a coefficient of 2, then that 2 times 2 is 4, and now I have 4 reactants. So the balanced equation, let's just make sure I have 4 hydrogens, 4 hydrogens, 2 oxygens, 2 oxygens. So 2 moles of hydrogen gas, 1 mole of oxygen gas will give me 2 moles of water vapor okay so hopefully that made sense and and you know I can just kind of show you where sometimes you can get tripped up a little bit there okay so um, there's a combustion reaction um, let's see here let's do um, let's do some let's do some magnesium okay and that is going to react with so magnesium solid that's going to react with um, into okay gas, and that is going to give me Mg three N two. Okay. All right. So let's let's just do the same thing. So let's go to um, reactants and products. All right. So we've got magnesium and nitrogen. Magnesium and nitrogen. So Mg Okay, and N, okay, so let's see, reactants, let's just start with magnesium. How many magnesiums do I have in my 
reactants. I have one magnesium, whoops, one magnesium in the reactants. Let's go to products here. I have three magnesium, okay? So what do I need to do to get reactants and products to equal out? Well, all I have to do is put a three in front of the magnesium here. So now I have three magnesium, three magnesium, good to go. So let's go over to nitrogen. I have two nitrogens in the reactants. How many nitrogens do I have in the products? It looks like two. And I now have a balanced equation. Three moles of magnesium reacting with one mole of nitrogen will give me one mole of this, um, which I believe is going to be a solid. Uh, so 